After several years of absolute abuse, my MX3 decided to give up a ghost at 2 a.m. halfway through the work. So I'm going to order MX4 with my own money, so this is not sponsored. And we'll see if all those claims made by influencers are actually true. Let's go. You know when you've got one of those weeks when you know you're not on top of anything? This is this is one of them. This, by the way, just came in. I didn't know that this is coming in as a part of a package. Uh, honest question, does anyone actually use those travel cases for anything else but storing shit around the house? Because, uh, nah. Okay, so we haven't even started yet and I need to call out the bullshit already. You know when some reviewers were saying that the side scroll is like infinite one, just, you know, like the, the main one where you can just spin it and it keeps going and going and going until you stop it? Uh, that's not the case. Dudes, this is this is exactly why when you're making a review, you just unpack the product and you start talking shit to a camera. How many people will be watching your video and go buy the mouse and go like, oh, oh, it's not working. It's not working because it's not that. You know, that little wheel that you can access, right? In order to get any of the presets, you have to log in. I mean, why? 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 Why do I have to have an account? for a freaking mouse. It's it's just so dumb. Now, if before we continue, I'd really appreciate if you could like and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, and it does help to grow this channel and allow me to test more of the products and put these videos up. By the way, this ring action thing is an exclusive to the MX4. You can get it with MX3 as well. Just when you update the software, speed adjustments on these wheels are exactly the same. There isn't massive difference between the MX3, which is here on 100% speed or, you know, the MX4. So if uh, if that's something you were looking forward to as a change, it just ain't there. Okay, I know I'm making a little bit too much out of the scroll wheel, but see how on the MX3 it sits just here, right? So it's below. Oh, focus cannon. Jesus, R5. When it sits just here, and on the MX4 is in line with your left button. So when you're scrolling. You're basically smudging that left button a little bit as well, which sends vibrations. It's not a big deal, it's just it's just that. Right, so I'm sure these profiles will be awesome when they'll start working, but we've been sitting like this for the last 15 minutes and nothing's happening. So I spent the whole day using this. I was thinking that I'm gonna make a video in one day, but then everything just collapsed. There were projects coming from different directions and I just had to dig in and work. The bottom line is that I had a full 12 14 hours of use of this versus my previous MX3. And the conclusion is it's a mouse. I know some people made a big deal out of the weight increase. It sounds horrible, but it, it's it's 6% increase. It's 150 grams now instead of 140 something. It makes zero difference, zero difference to everyday use. This is not a gaming mouse either. So I appreciate that you want a lighter mouse if you're competitively playing online. Cool, I'm there with you. However, if you're getting this mouse for playing, something went wrong in your buying decision process. One of the things that hasn't changed is the polling rate. It's still 125 hertz. So there's no chance of you winning any tournaments with this little guy. It's enough for casual gaming. I'm using it on my Mac to play through GeForce Nvidia. Now, one of the things, that, at least in my opinion, they did very well is replacing that awful rubber with plastic. That's similar to most of the gaming console controllers with the only exception of the silicon on the both sides. But again, it's silicon, it's not rubber, so it should be much easier to clean and kind of maintain it because well, let's be honest, the MX3 is impossible to keep clean. And I don't normally care because if I'm working alone, that's not a problem. But if someone comes over and looks at my mouse, it looks uh, very unsavory no matter how much time you spend cleaning it. In terms of repositioning the buttons, I don't see this as a, any kind of issue. I don't know why people are saying, oh, it was gonna take you a couple of days to get used to it. They're actually in the same place. The only difference is that the back and forth button is a little bit pushed backwards, and then you've got gestures button here, instead of using that little squishy pad. How much of a difference that's gonna make to anyone? I genuinely am a little bit impressed because I think it's just a way of adding a little bit of drama to the videos. It, it makes no difference to me whatsoever. And yes, this gesture button actually comes in handy if you configure it properly, which brings me to another point. I was moaning a little bit about the software I need to log in and I'm still not over it. It's just, I think, unnecessary for us to having to log into a mouse. But the customization in this is pretty awesome and it probably allows you to streamline your workflow. My only issue is that downloading any of the plugins, like, 
failed <laughs> on me completely and I just don't really want to waste my time on trying to do it again. Whereas with the built-in controls, yeah, everything works as it should and I'm pretty sure the software is going to get better. And the haptic stuff, it, it is handy. Even if you switch on the option to for it to vibrate when you're switching between different screens so you know where your mouse is, yeah, it, it's kind of cool. I wouldn't say that this is anything that you should be upgrading from from the MX3 or 3S because it's just a gimmick, but it's nice to have in a new mouse. Now, what isn't so nice is the price increase. It's almost 120 bucks compared to MX3S, which I think I got for something like 60 bucks on the Black Friday sale. So I don't think this is going to go half price. And I think spending $120 on a mouse retrospectively doesn't sound that much appealing. Especially since this is just a work mouse, doesn't have any bells or whistles, you're not going to be gaming with it as we established already. So yeah, if a price is a problem, I would still go with the MX3S because it will only get cheaper now. Okay, someone mentioned that there's no cable coming with this. Thank you, because I've got hundreds of cables lying in my drawers and I appreciate, again, price point of 120 should be included. Um, I don't think that's that, that that's a thing we should be focusing on because we all have loads of cables and I literally never use anything coming with these products because they're typically pretty shit. And I've got enough cables right, lying around here. Speaking of which, this is USB-C and the dongle, voila, is USB-C as well. I couldn't really understand why the 3S came with USB-C port on the front and then USB-A dongle. It just didn't make any sense. What still doesn't make any sense to me is why can't we use this as a wired mouse? The reason why I'm talking about the wired mode is that just like with the 3S, I did have some communication with my Mac. It's not that it was jittery like on the previous one, although I do have a lot of different Bluetooth signals in my room and Wi-Fi, but it literally refused to connect once and I had to remap it to a second device. And it did happen a few times with the MX3. And I do like having things wired up. So whenever I'm in a work mode, I don't want to mess around even with my Keychron. I've got it in a wired mode because A, latency is different when you've got a wires involved, but also it is bulletproof because it's wired, so it works all the time. In terms of how loud it is and the clicks, if you're working at night like me, <laughs> I should say that I should care more about like the noise coming out of my room, but this is clicky enough. Uh, and the 3S and the 4, they sound exactly the same. So here's the uh, sound sample for those who like listening to clicks. In terms of shape of these two, they are almost exactly the same. I would say the MX4 has this bump a little bit taller than the MX3, which actually fits my hand a little bit better. And I know some people complain about the size of the mouse. If you got a standard size hand, this should be an issue. And if you found the previous iteration of this mouse being like correct size and comfort for you, you'll be just right at home with the MX4. So look, if your mouse is about to die, the Logitech MX4 is definitely one of the best workhorses out there. If you've got MX3 or MX3S and it's not giving you any trouble or just isn't looking absolutely fugly, you really don't need to have FOMO or this one. Aside from the price, I have no regrets here and previous one served me so well that I'm pretty sure that this one will do just as good. Now, as always, leave questions and your views on the MX4 below. See you in the next one.